Hi, this is Lynn Hirschberger from ColorJoy.com. I'm here to talk about the Crystal Socklet from Nitty.com, March 2012. What we're going to do is we're going to actually put the heel in today. And uh, you notice that if I put this on my little foot mannequin, that heel spot looks a little bit forward, but, but this heel has a, a more depth than most afterthought heels do. So this heel is going to come up and around and come across here and, and have some depth here so that you can fit that. And it, it should stay on very well when you're in a, in a shoe. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to pick up those stitches. Stitches are V's and uh, they're not house tops. They are V's. So this is two stitches next to each other. What you need to understand about this is when we go to pick up stitches, if we turn them upside down, then we don't have two stitches anymore. What we have is one stitch and two half stitches hanging out. And this is why I recommend in the pattern that you keep the sock toe down while you're doing the pickup of stitches on both sides. We're going to actually secure those stitches before we pull out the yarn so we won't have any loose stitches which always kind of freaks people out. Now I really like picking up stitches with really small needles that just gives me more room to, to work. This very first stitch right here is a V. I'm going to pick up the stitch right above it and this is a darker yarn but uh, hopefully you can see that I'm going to pick it up under the right side of the V because when we have stitches on our needles they are twisted with the right side forward. So I'm going right above this. This yarn we're going to pull out so I want to get the stitch right above it and I'm just going to pull that stitch uh, the right side forward. Then I'm going to pass over the left side and go under and under and I'm just going to sometimes it helps to stretch the fabric a little bit I'm really trying to make it so you can see this so we're gonna hold it in different ways and it's easy to skip over and end up on the left side you might have to take out a few if you find yourself with a hiccup I have now done this now again I'm on a smaller number of of stitches but I would count these and make sure I really had the number that I uh, had made into a waist yarn. Now we have to pick up the bottom ones. This is where a lot of people do turn it upside down and if you do when you're picking up the right side you've got this half a stitch over here. That means you're going to end up with at least one extra stitch or one, or, or one too few stitches. So I prefer to leave it vertical and I'm going to go for the the right of the stitch below it. Now this is a really loosey-goosey stitch because it's not attached to anything but I can kind of poke my way around. If you take your needle and you get really close to it with your fingers that should help you. Uh, working a needle this far away means you don't have much control over it. So whenever you can work with your needle really up there where you're touching that point you're going to get a lot more control over it. And The first one's always a little more fussy I'm going to just pick up half of them down here and again because I'm doing a fatter yarn and I have a small foot I only have 20 stitches in this uh, 40, 40 in the circumference 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 so now I'm going to pick up yet another needle and yet another color hopefully you can see it and right next to where I was I'm going to start picking this one up right below the V and there is a possibility you'll split a little bit but you should be able to rescue that on the first time around. I have a quarter of the stitches on here, a quarter of the stitches on here, and uh, a half of the stitches of what will be our circumference on the top. And you could have divided them at the point, it depends on how many needles you're comfortable with, if you want more flexibility or if you want fewer points sticking out. So I'm not going to knit on these, I'm just doing this because they're smaller needles and they're just easier. There's a little more air space between the stitches if I do it this way. Now what I want to do is pull out the the waist yarn and I like to get that end right out of the way so I'm going to cut it. There, that amount of yarn isn't going to work for any other process so I can toss it without feeling too guilty. I'm just going in here and I'm pulling out that contrasting color yarn and I'm just going to pull that guy out. Make sure you do this with something that can't break 
uh, it's better to use something metal or something pretty sturdy like this thicker bamboo. If you find at this point you want to turn it around and pull out the yarn from the other side, that works. And again, I like snipping that. Follow your gut on these things. They're, you know, we can have rules and laws and all that stuff. And really, this is an art form that was created by the necessity of covering feet and hands and getting warm. So uh, if it fits your foot, it's a sock. And if you did it a different way and it still fits your foot, it's a sock. If it fits somebody else's foot, for that matter, we hope this will fit yours. So now I have this wonderful new hole. It looks really a lot bigger than you would have expected. And it's going to turn into four sections of knitting. And again, some of you are using a different formulation of how your needles are and what kind of needles you're using. That's going to be where the heel goes. So here we've got a sock with a cuff. Now I'm starting with the main color for just one round. That just makes this little corner look less of a corner. And there will be a hole. There's always a hole in the edge of a sock because you've got things pulling toward the front, you've got pull, pulling towards the top, and you've got a section pulling towards the heel. So you have three sections of a sock that are all pulling against each other, and this is where you're changing gears, so it's a weak spot anyway. There's always a hole, and there are all sorts of tricks for dealing with it. My favorite trick is to sew it together at the end, so that's going to be my last hand, uh, my last video is how to deal with that and working in your ends so you don't have any knots in your toe or if you have a broken yarn you can fix it without any knots. This is my smaller size needle because I'm doing no color work. I used the larger needles for color work. Now here are where we've got a lot of distance between these two needles. I'm going to just go up here and make my stitch and then I'm going to pull it as close as I can to where it was. I'm pulling sort of with my yarn. It doesn't matter which hand you hold it in. Now I'm going to pull this again. Once you have two stitches that are kind of tugged in pretty well, it doesn't come out that easily. And then you can go back to your regular uh, tension, whatever that might be. If I was going to have all of the top stitches on one needle, at this point, it would tell us to place a marker. So where did I put my lovely little pink marker? I had one here. Here it is. And we can just pretend that I was on that with one needle. I like to do the, the instep or the top stitches with one needle with a marker in the middle. At this point, you might have a change of needles with your magic loop or something and but the pattern is basically telling you to go one quarter of the way around, place a marker or change needles, then do another quarter, place a marker or change needles, and continue around with four sections of even numbers of stitches, and place a marker or change your needle because that will help you do your decreases once we get into the decrease rounds. Again, I'm just knitting off of the needles that I used to pick up stitches that were this, the very tiny size. I've now made my first round, which now puts markers or gaps between needles so that the, there are four sections that are equally balanced. And uh, now I can cut this yarn. We're going to deal with, we're working it, um, working it in later in a different video. I'm going to leave enough of an end so that I can sew with it, that there will be an end that's not too short. I'm just going to tuck that guy right in so it doesn't bother me too much. The crystal heel includes five sections. Section one, the first three rounds, has no decreases at all to make up for the fact that an afterthought heel does not have a gusset. In section two, you will decrease on every fourth round, and that means you're going to work three rounds of plain knitting, which I call vacation knitting. So you're going to have three vacation rounds, and then you will follow that with a decrease round with four decreases in that round. In the crystal socklet, I have specified that the four 
decreases are equally spaced in four sections at the end of each section. Section two is what's unique to the crystal heel. It creates a shape that's more closely matched to your heel than a typical afterthought heel. It's giving that depth of your, your foot. Instead of doing this, what we've got is a shape that's coming more like this. And that just fits most human heels much better than something like a, a house top. In section three, you'll decrease every other round, which is more typical. A lot of things are decreased every other round. So that section will feel familiar to you if you've done any other socks. On section four, you're going to decrease every single round. We want to close up that heel really quickly at this point. We've given it a lot of depth, and now we want to make a nice curvy edge at the top. Section five, you're going to close the heel with whichever is your preferred method. I hope to see you at the next video. Thank you for joining me again. Lynn Hirschberger from colorjoy.com. Thank you so much. Happy knitting.